Okay, maybe I'll start, start speeding up a bit now. Um, so I don't want to waste your time. Metaphysics of God. Here we go. Three markers we've had so far. Eternal versus everlasting. Moral and natural evil. Eschatological verification. Unfalsifiable religious language. What that means. Um, that it could be unfalsifiable. The definitions from, yeah, something to do with definitions in ontological argument, definitions of God, Swinburne on a temporal order and what that is. I guessed definitions or language last year. Um, I got it right because it was a definition, but that's not too difficult to guess. They went for omniscience and omnipotence last year, which is a nice easy one. So smiley face for that. So what is it going to be this year? Probably definitions again. What's left? <sighs> They've done most of the key distinctions and definitions. Maybe something to do with religious language again, because it's been a while since we've had that. Maybe what it, what is... Maybe they'll do verification and um, just the straight verification principle, but with relation to, to religious language. Um, that, that would make a lot of sense. Um, maybe it will be eternal everlasting again, like on the specimen. It will be types of evil again. Or another, um, yeah, attributes of God are quite nice for, for this. Um, yeah, supreme goodness hasn't come up here. That would make a lot of sense uh, to ask about a three marker. But let's keep going. Five markers, loads they've asked about. Um, easier to guess because they haven't done yet so yeah we got it right last year one of our guesses was oh why have i put a smiley face there i i usually put a smiley face if i get it right um oh no i did uh, i predicted it yeah here we go i said as a 12 marker but that's because remember fives and 12s and even threes sort of can kind of be interchangeable uh, depending on how they phrase it or what they what they um sandwich it with Anything that can be asked about for a five marker could also be in a 12 marker and vice versa. It just depends how they phrase it and what they what they put it next to. So I guess Descartes Cosmological last year because it hadn't come up and we got it way. Um, so what am I going to get? What am I guessing this year? Oh, yeah. And also we had empiricist objections to ontological arguments last year. Um, yeah, which I, I hadn't guessed. But that's just because we're it's kind of um, we're sort of betting here where there's there's only a certain pool of stuff that hasn't appeared before. So guesses for this year. I'm still guessing Kalam because that makes a lot of sense. Hasn't appeared yet. It's only a matter of time before the Kalam argument appears. It's a nice, easy five marker. What is the Kalam argument? Aquinas' second way. We still await that appearing. Mitchell on religious language hasn't still hasn't appeared yet. And oh my goodness, Hicks the Odyssey. That is such a key one to ask about in philosophy of religion exam, in a metaphysics of God exam. But still that hasn't appeared. So that would make a lot of sense for Hicks the Odyssey to come up. No guarantees, no money back, but those are my best guesses. Uh, for 12 marker, so all of those also for 12 markers, perhaps with the corresponding problem or argument they relate to, if it's a if it's a criticism or if it's a theory, or well, that really, really applies to Hicks theology. So they could do a form of the problem of evil, like they did back in 2021, say logical or evidential, and then Hicks theology. That would make a lot of sense for a 12 marker. But other criticisms of arguments, there are plenty still to ask about. So they could do, tell me an argument, tell me this criticism of it, like they did last year, Hume and um, sorry, Hume's design argument and the unique case criticism. They could do very similar format with another argument and criticism this year. I'll show you more in a sec on the next slide. But let's talk about the 25 marker, the one you're no doubt most interested in. Highest stakes, most work, most difficult to do. Um, yeah, so we had religious language last year. That was nice because that's what we guessed. So hope that, hopefully that gives you some... Uh, confidence in me and these these guesses um, I'm guessing design this year that's my my strongest prediction because it's um, been the longest time since it came up they can't do language again because it was last year so you don't need I'm not even going to make my students this year unless they want to for their own learning and personal enrichment and development as the human being they don't have to write an essay on religious language um, so yeah you don't need to prep that you do need to prep design argument that's the highest probability i think then if we work closer to the present through through chronological order concept of god ontological arguments problem of evil cosmological argument so in in that order they could ask about all of those because they're perfectly prepared to pre repeat questions from two years ago. But I think they get less and less likely as you go through because that's the order that they've appeared so far. So, yeah, who, who knows? My, my money's on design argument or concept of God. But I'm afraid you do need plans for ontological arguments, problem of evil and cosmological arguments up your sleeve as well. Although, yeah, cosmological arguments, it's, it's unlikely, but they could be mean and do it. To be fair, though, I think they, they tend to save the meanest stuff for the second half of each paper because papers are meant to get more and more difficult as you go through as i understand it um so yeah maybe they'll they, they'll put the the kind of the more surprising things in the second half in which case if it was predictable it's going to be design or concept of god so be ready for those loads of stuff in my revision videos on those let's keep going 
So yeah, look, it's much shorter. Here you are. Areas of metaphysics of God specification not yet asked about in A01 shorter exam questions. Let's just talk about these ones first. The Kalam cosmological argument, Aquinas' second way, Hicks on making defense, and Mitchell on religious language. Those are all the sort of straightforward arguments they haven't asked about yet. So highly, highly likely to appear at some point, perhaps this year. The rest of the stuff that hasn't appeared yet um, is um, the other criticisms of the arguments for the existence of God. Of, yeah, of which, fair enough, there are still quite a lot. But because these are more to do with evaluation and analysis, they're more likely to appear in the second five marker or the 12 marker, paired with their corresponding argument for the existence of God, perhaps. So who knows, maybe as a 12 marker, they'll give you Aquinas' second way or Kalam, and then a possible criticism of those that hasn't been asked about yet. So the ones that they have asked about of these criticisms of argument for the existence of God are the fallacy of composition criticism of cosmological arguments. So that's much less likely to come up again. And last year, the unique case objection from Hume to teleological arguments. So highly, highly, highly unlikely those aren't going to come up again this year. But be ready for all the other criticisms of metaphysics of God, arguments for the existence of God. Of which, okay, yeah, fair enough. There's quite a few of those. But it was easier to summarise them under one kind of category of thing that you need to know about. Let's move on finally then to metaphysics of mind. OK, here we go. Metaphysics of mind. Now, there's a there's an extra big disclaimer for my predictions about metaphysics of mind because I have not yet taught it in a school or tutoring setting. It will happen at some point And then these videos will become, you know, even more useful, I hope, and, and carry even even greater currency. But because I don't teach this, my guesses aren't as steered by my own uh, experience in the classroom and experience having students being examined on stuff that I've taught them. So it, in in my um, my base school, which I use as a base at the moment for my other work, because um, it's good to have a school that you're actually on the payroll of. I, I share philosophy and it's taught by um, by another person this this bit. So that's just a disclaimer. My guesses carry slightly less currency, but hey, look, you can still whoever you are, any philosophy teacher can look at these these grids of what's come up before and play guessing based on probabilities, looking at what's on the specification. So we can still do that. So this should still be useful to you up to a point. So here we go. Three markers. All sorts of stuff has been asked before. What haven't they had? I'm guessing intentionality for a three mark for this for a three marker. Um, cause I guessed it last year and it didn't come up and that was annoying. No, but seriously, because I still think it's a, a high likelihood cause they haven't done it before and it would be a sensible candidate. So in fact, in my base school, we asked this as, as for the mock for the three marker. Um, but it could still be anything they're hard to guess, but yeah, why not intentionality or a repeat of something else? It could be anything. Um, five markers, slightly easier to guess, but still quite hard. What hasn't appeared yet, I'll show you as usual again in a moment. I'll show you exactly what hasn't been asked about yet in Metaphysics of Mind for short answer questions. But of those things, my best guess is still soft behaviorism. Even though I was wrong last year, that, that just raises the probability this year because I thought there was a likely chance last year. Um, so maybe so-called soft behaviorism or maybe dualist arguments when applied to um, MBTIT. I need to remind myself what MBTIT is on the next slide in, in a moment. Um, so yeah, those are my best guesses from what they haven't asked about so far, but I, I'll, I'll give you more in a sec of specifics because yeah, I'm doing that for this, the 12 marker as well. See you next slide for 12 marker. It'll be an issue not yet, uh, yet asked about most likely, although they are capable of repeating stuff. Like I've said many times, I'm repeating myself. I'm very capable of repeating myself as well in this video. Right, 25 marker though, most important one, most interesting. So the one thing we know is not behaviorism, okay? Not a behaviorism essay because that would be super unlikely now because they have never yet, if 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 the examiners were sort of a, a program or like an AI and we were trying to guess what they're going to do next based on what they've done before. So they still probably have free will depending on your belief. Well, I believe they have free will, so they can still do anything, but it, it would be unlike anything they've done before to ask behaviorism for a 25 marker this coming, this, this year, because it was last year. So maybe that means, hopefully that means you don't have to do a behaviorism essay plan. So what's it going to be then? Well, why not a dualism essay question? Because it's been a while since we had dualism. Or why not functionalism? Because it's been, um, the that's that hasn't come up in a while too because yeah behaviorism was the, the 25 marker something to do with behaviorism with the 25 marker for the specimen paper and we got it lit last year and as i understand it a limited eliminative materialism though i don't teach this um has has a relationship to behaviorism so that means 
that eliminates that. Oh, and look, eliminative materialism has also come up twice before. So that lowers its likelihood slightly. Therefore, most likely to be dualism or functionalism. Um, oh yeah, that's what MBTIT stands for. Mind, brain type, identity theory and mental state. So that was two years ago. Not impossible they could repeat that, but that would be really, really nasty. Um, so be, be, you need that up your sleeve just in case if you're being thorough and trying to maximise your chances of doing well in this exam, getting the grade you want, going to the university you want and going on to a, to a bright future, no doubt. No pressure, no pressure. Sorry, I'm just, um, just, just joking with you. Those things are true to some extent. Um, you no, the you, the future of your entire life does not depend on this exam. People listening and watching, relax. Your identity as a person does not depend on how you de perform in this philosophy exam. But um, it'd still be nice to do as well as you can. Yeah, right. I'm just waffling now. I do apologise. Let's do the the final slide to just um, put the put the seal on this. Yeah. Okay. So here you go. Areas of metaphysics of mind. That as far as I can see, not having taught it, there's the disclaimer. It's an extra disclaimer, no money back guarantee for this one. To, they don't seem to me to have come up yet in any AO1 shorter exam questions. What are they? Intentionality of mental states. Hence, maybe that will be in a short answer question, like a three marker or something else. Responses to Cartesian, the Cartesian indivisibility argument about how you can't split up um, mind in the same way as you can split up body. So it must be a different kind of thing. I know that. I, I, I know metaphysics of mine, it's just I didn't teach it, but I'm, I'm being I'm being um, careful here. Um, responses to, conceivability, to the conceivability argument. The other two responses they haven't asked about yet, um, with regards to which I refer you to the previous slide, to the, the zombies argument. The other two responses they haven't asked about yet, again, regarding which I refer you to the previous slide, the grid on the previous slide, to the knowledge slash Mary argument. The analogy response to the problem of other minds. So they've asked about other responses on these to these things, which they could repeat, but more likely to do a new response, a bit like direct realism and epistemology. Um, the criticisms of direct realism, that is. They haven't asked about other issues facing interactionist dualism that they haven't asked about before, regarding which I refer you to the, the, the grid on the previous slide. Um, they haven't asked about, again, the other two responses to epi epiphenomenalist dualism. I'm not going to repeat myself, you know the drill by now. Um, they haven't asked about so-called soft behaviorism, the other responses f to physicalism, not asked about yet. Dualist arguments applied to mind, brain, type, identity theory, other issues with eliminative materialism and other issues with functionalism. So, yeah, I appreciate, I understand I'm summarizing on here um, b because I haven't taught this 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 year. But I, I hope that makes sense if you do, if you go back to the grid on the previous slide and work out, okay, what criticisms have they looked at? Then that tells you what the ones on the specification are that they haven't looked at. I've, I've given you a little bit more to do here, but to be fair, once again, it's still worth revising everything, especially to do with dualism and functionalism, given those are the essay questions most likely to appear this year. So it's useful to have all of those criticisms um, in, your, in your brain, in your memory, so that you can talk about them, whether they asked about in a short answer question or in an essay question. Okay, so I hope that is helpful to you. Do please uh, comment whether on Patreon or YouTube with any feedback, positive or negative, or uh, constructive criticism, or just probably more likely just any questions you have um, about particular things. Remember that I have got lots and lots of content on the YouTube channel, like and subscribe, blah, 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 um, about the all of this stuff, set metaphysics of mind, Loads of revision stuff and in-depth stuff and stuff about exam technique as well is out there. Don't forget those videos, uh, how to write essays, my Segal writing frame for writing essays. So feel free to, to shoot me any questions about that as well on YouTube or Patreon. And yeah, good luck to you. I hope this gives you a boost and has and helped you and been worthwhile and, and, and worth the money if you paid for it. Uh, all the very best to you. Go well in your philosophy exam and I hope you achieve the goals that you're aiming for. Take care out there.